So we're going to do the heart in this uh, video. We'll probably have to split it into a couple of pieces. First thing we want to do is orient the heart. And uh, so we're going to pull this piece of material back. And I'm going to show you a couple of tricks that I use. Um, one of the tricks I use to tell the ventral side is this interventricular uh, sulcus. And the interventricular sulcus is inter means between, ventricular between the ventricles. It's diagonal on the ventral side or oblique. Whereas if we look at the dorsal side, the interventricular sulcus pretty much goes straight cranial caudal. Okay. Another thing about the ventral side that I use as a clue is this large vessel right here. And this large vessel is the pulmonary trunk. It's been cut open so we can see into it. Pulmonary trunk is an artery. You can see how thick the wall is. And uh, then dorsal to that is going to be the aorta. This uh, obviously is a skirt. So uh, this is a girl heart. And... Um, the skirt is actually not a skirt, it is the pericardium. So the pericardium is a special kind of pleura that surrounds the heart, secretes fluids, pericardial fluid, and that uh, helps lubricate the heart so it doesn't have a lot of friction. We'll get a little bit more geography here. Uh, we have a left atrium and we have a right atrium. Okay. We have a left ventricle and we have a right ventricle. A lot of my students have problems uh, distinguishing between atria and atrium. Atrium is singular, so if I talk about this, it's an atrium. If I talk about the two collectively, it would be atria. Okay. Uh, we have the pulmonary trunk, as I mentioned, the aorta. And we can tell that this is the left side if we open the heart up because the left side is going to have thicker wall and the right side has a thinner wall. And so you might say to yourself, if you were talking head, Gee, if this has a thicker wall on the left, it must pump more blood. That's not the case. The left side pumps exactly the same as the right. It needs thicker walls because it pumps with more force, and it needs that force to distribute the blood through the body. And, and the path of the blood uh, we'll probably go over. Uh, it's really more a subject of circulation than it is the heart specifically, but it kind of gives you a little bit of, of understanding there. This is the interventricular septum going between them. Okay. So now let's look up at the right atrium. We'll go, that's where the blood enters the heart from coming back from the body. And we see that <clears throat> there are these ridges in here that look sort of like tree roots. These are the pectinate muscles. And the pectinate muscles are a feature that we find in both atria, both right and left. We're going to see something similar to that in the ventricle, but it's not called pectinate muscle. It's called the trabeculi carni. And if we look back into the right atrium, we see that there's an opening back there. I just put the probe into it. And that is the coronary sinus. And if I rotate the heart and we're looking at the dorsal side now, you can see that the interventricular uh, sulcus is going cranial caudal. If I move this, I think you can probably see that this little covering right here is moving because of the probe. Okay? That is the coronary sinus. And the coronary sinus is like a Quonset hut. So it's shaped sort of like half of a tube and it goes over the coronary sulcus. Coronary sulcus goes between the atria and the ventricles. Okay. All right, there is a uh, fossovallus, but I'll show you that on another heart because you can't really see it in this heart. So the blood comes into the right atrium and it goes down over this valve right here into the right ventricle. And if we look at that valve, we can see it sort of looks like a trampoline. And in fact, if you look at it, you pull it a little bit, you see that this trampoline has these little cords attached to it. Okay? So this is the tricuspid valve. It has three cusps. It's an atrioventricular valve. And these are the chordae tendinae. And the chordae tendinae help keep the valve from prolapsing back into the right atrium when the pressure builds up in the ventricle. If you look right over here, you see these cords attached at the other end of this little structure that's kind of sticking off the wall of the heart. That's a papillary muscle. It looks like a pimple. Okay? So the papillary muscles project from the heart, and we'll talk about the function of those in lab.